Good morning. You're watching ABC News. I'm Michael Rowland. Well, the House of Representatives is about to vote on the government's controversial carbon tax. As you can see here, federal MPs are standing for the daily prayer. They're gathering in preparation for what will be an historic vote. Now, debate, as we know, on the bills went well into the night last night and they're expected to be passed narrowly this morning. We're joined now by ABC News 24 political editor Lyndall Curtis. Lyndall, good morning. As a veteran of uh, many more of these votes that you'd uh, prefer not to count, I suppose, what exactly is going to happen on the House floor this morning? Well, the bills will be read for a third time. They've been through their first and second reading and there will be votes on them. The 18 carbon price bills, the clean energy future bills, will be taken in a block and there'll be a separate vote on the steel transformation plan, which interestingly yesterday in the second reading votes got one more vote than the carbon tax bills because Bob Catter, the uh, Queensland Independent switch sides to vote for the steel transformation plan. So the uh, the uh, we'll cross now to hear what's happening in the House of Representatives as the final votes get underway. And uh, obviously, Linda, we're seeing uh, the first of what could be several divisions being played out on the House floor this morning. Uh, will there be, I know there are plenty of amendments moved by the opposition uh, and others last night in the second reading stage of this, of this bill. Are you expecting any further big ticket amendments as we move towards this final third reading vote? No, we're not. The, the amendments were all dealt with as part of the debate in consideration last night, which, as you said, went till the, the late hours. Parliament sat till 11 o'clock Canberra time to deal with all the amendments. The, the final second reading vote was held at 5 o'clock Canberra time, so there was a considerable period of debate on the amendments last night. Uh, we can see in the chamber, in the chair, the climate change minister, Greg Combe, sitting next to him, the prime minister, Julia Gillard. Uh, Ms Gillard has already been out for a media blitz this morning to talk up what she says is the historic nature of the day. She's been saying all morning that she's not focused on the opinion polls which show that the government's been in some trouble for some time and that its, its uh, carbon price legislation is not widely accepted by the community but she says it's important to focus on the policy uh, which will be the carbon price bill starting off with a fixed price period of uh, carbon price of $23 a tonne before moving to a full emissions trading scheme. Uh, it is not the first time the Parliament has dealt with these matters. Kevin Rudd, the former Prime Minister, tried twice to get his carbon pollution reduction scheme through the Parliament, but it was finally defeated in December 2009 when the opposition changed leadership from, from Malcolm Turnbull to Tony Abbott. So the, uh, the issue of a carbon price has played a big part in the downfall of three leaders, Kevin Rudd, the Prime Minister, uh, and two opposition leaders, Brendan Nelson and Malcolm Turnbull. Julia Gillard will be determined that it doesn't see her eventual downfall, and the government is very much hoping that uh, once the carbon price comes in in July next year, that people will see it's not the ogre that the opposition has been making out. The opposition, of course, has been fighting against this for quite some time since the leadership change. This this iteration of the carbon price was uh, was announced in February by the government and Tony Abbott's been going around the country fighting against it since even before then, uh, dubbing it, uh, as Barnaby Joyce did on the CPRS, a great big new tax and vowing even again this morning to repeal it, saying it was a pledge written in blood. The government, of course, believes that the, uh, the opposition well, the coalition wouldn't be able to repeal it once in government uh, because of all the compensation that goes with the carbon price. That's tax cuts particularly aimed at low to middle income earners, pension rises. Uh, the government believes that once those areas of compensation will come in, that it will be too hard for, for a future coalition government to be seen to be taking away money. All that is potentially for the future today, though. Today we are seeing the third reading vote on the clean energy future bills, the package of 18 bills mm. the government's been putting before the parliament. Understandably, Lyndall, the, the votes were fairly tight in those second reading votes last night, given the, the status of the government uh, on the floor of the House. 
The votes were very tight. The votes on the 18 carbon price bills went 74-73, so there was only one vote in it. The government will have its life just a little easier this morning mm. after Coalition frontbencher Sophie Mirabella was turfed out of Parliament for 24 hours after being named right by the Deputy Lock Speaker, the Peter Slipper. And we're just hearing Harry Jenkins, the Speaker, the uh, calling for the doors the to be locked. Amendments be agreed to. The ayes will pass to the right of the chair, the noes to the left. And I appoint the honourable members for Shortland and Chifley tellers for the ayes, and the members for Parks and Barker tellers for the noes. Okay, now the formal vote is uh, of heads. The counting of heads is about to take place on what appears to be uh, the first division on uh, one of the government's amendments. Lyndall, you were referring just before we cut there to Harry Jenkins to effectively what was a huge own goal by Sophie Mirabella last night. Yes, it was. Sophie Mirabella uh, attempted to table some things at the end of her speech. She, uh, she was refused leave by the government and then she was asked twice to sit down by the, by the acting speaker, Peter Slipper, who's a coalition MP. He warned her twice and then named her. That's a precursor to, uh, to being thrown out of Parliament for 24 hours. Once someone is named, then the government moves that, uh, that uh, they be suspended from the services of the House. That's, that's uh, a more unusual move in these days of the Parliament where the, the Speaker has the option of sin bending someone for an hour, but instead Sophie Mirabella was named, so she won't be able to come back in the Parliament till late tonight. That means, of course, that her vote can't be counted. So the vote we are likely to see on the 18 carbon price bills, uh, if we take yesterday's vote, would be eyes 74, nose 72. So a very little bit of breathing room for the government. But I guess in these days of a minority parliament, the government will take any breathing room it can get. Indeed, and breathe in deeply. There we see a shot of those critical independents uh, there who are siding with the government to get this legislation through. As you know, Lyndall, there is uh, speculation in the corridors there of Parliament House as to whether the federal government might seek to capitalise on Sophie Mirabella's absence and bring forward that legislation facilitating the Malaysia people swap deal. What have, the, what have you heard about the prospect of that happening? Well, the government's been saying this morning that it is in, its intention is still to have that vote on the on the offshore processing of asylum seekers tomorrow. That was always the plan. Uh, there is another wrinkle in proceedings, though, if the government did take. Take, seek to take advantage of Sophie Mirabella's absence from the Parliament, that there's another pairing going on. Craig Thompson, the Labor MP who's awaiting the birth of his child, has been paired with Liberal MP Mal Washer. And you would think that if the government uh, tried anything on, on the asylum seekers, then the opposition would quickly move to undo that pairing arrangement. And, uh, and that would mean the government would have to bring Craig Thompson back uh, quick smart. The government's also negotiating with the WA National, Tony Crawford who, as of late yesterday, hadn't made up his mind on which way he would vote on the legislation to, again, allow offshore processing of asylum seekers. So it was still negotiating with him yesterday, and I think it wouldn't seek to, to try and upset those negotiations, uh, because that way it could get a clearer passage of its bill. It will be passage in the House of Representatives only, though. The, the legislation is doomed to fail in the Senate. The opposition won't support it, as it won't support it in the House of Representatives. And the Greens, who don't want any offshore processing at all, won't support it either. The government, if it got a win in the House, it would be only a symbolic win. Yeah, there we see a shot, as you are speaking, Lyndall, of uh, the Prime Minister and the Climate Change Minister, Greg Combe, obviously very happy about the impending passage of this legislation. Just on that asylum seeker legislation, I suppose it could be argued many Labor strategists would be wanting clear air for the government to capitalise on what undoubtedly is going to be a big-ticket political victory for them. Yes, the government would certainly want some clear air and, uh, and the, uh, the asylum seeker issue would cloud that clear air. But certainly after the vote today uh, in the House of Representatives on the carbon price bills, then, uh, then they'll go for debate in the Senate. Now, unlike the government's uh, carbon pollution reduction scheme that Kevin Rudd tried to get through Parliament, the passage in the Senate is actually, uh, actually easier because uh, it will have the support of the Greens Order in the last the Senate. Or we'll just hear the result of the division. No, 72. The question is therefore resolved in the affirmative. Order. 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 Ha, 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 ha.
The House will come to order and the galleries. We've got a little way to go yet. The question now is that the amendment to the Clean Energy Bill 2011 moved by the Leader of the Opposition be agreed to. All those of that opinion say aye. aye. Contrary, no. Aye. I think the noes have it. Division required. Ring the bells for one minute. One minute. Uh, stating the bleeding obvious there, Lyndall said we do have potentially some time to go yes. before we get to the final vote. You were mentioning the Senate vote. Why, why, is, why is there this uh, what, two or three week ab uh, break between this vote in the House today and when the Senate gets to vote on the legislation? Well, some of it's to do with parliamentary sittings. Uh, the parliament doesn't sit all those weeks. The other thing is there will be time allowed for the Senate debate. Uh, I've been joined in the studio by the Finance Minister Penny Wong, who was the Climate Change Minister the last time the Parliament voted on these issues. She'll also have carriage of the vote in the Senate. Penny Wong, uh, is this a significant milestone for you, watching the votes in the House of Representatives go through on the clean energy future packages? I think it's a, an historic day for the country and certainly a great achievement uh, for the government and particularly the Prime Minister, uh, who's managed to get a, a minority government to get through a, a reform that we all know is in the national interest that previously was supported by John Howard as well as Malcolm Turnbull. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, politics until now has got in the way. So this is, this is a very good day uh, for the future. Uh, last time the bills went through the Senate, they, their passage was much more troubled because the opposition leader changed. You will be having carriage of these bills through the Senate this time. Are you expecting a much, much easier passage? And when do you expect them to pass? Well, uh, last time, you might recall, uh, we did have the numbers for a period because we got uh, Mr Turnbull's agreement so we went into the Senate debate, a very long Senate debate, uh, with uh, a majority in the Senate. Uh, but of course, during the course of the somewhat, uh, I think some 60 hours of debate in the Senate, um, Malcolm Turnbull was replaced as leader by Tony Abbott uh, on the basis that he would oppose action on climate change. So it was a very, uh, you might recall, a, a pretty volatile time, a very uh, tense time. Uh, very disappointing from, for, for all of us who want action on climate change because we watched uh, the vote shift during the course of the debate. So and in fact, the tenor of the debate shifted during absolutely. the course of the debate as, as those backing Tony Abbott became sure that they had the numbers. That's right. I remember, I think it was Senator McGoran coming in and saying, I know something you don't know. Of course, we all knew what was happening uh, and gloating about it. And, uh, and uh, really, it was quite sad to see that kind of uh, small-minded politics triumph uh, uh, in relation to what should have been a, a reform for the future. So it's good that the Parliament, I think, on this occasion will do better, uh, will do uh, better by future generations of Australians. And, and uh, the votes are still being counted in the chamber. Uh, do you know when this vote, when the vote will happen in the Senate, how much debate will be allowed on the bills in the Senate before they go through? Are you expecting them to be through in the next month? Oh, look, uh, we'll have uh, that debate, I think, uh, uh, probably today or tomorrow in terms of the hours uh, uh, as to when uh, the bills will be brought on and debated in the Senate. We'll have a proper debate. Uh, we'll have a full debate, but we will bring the vote to a conclusion uh, because, uh, you know, this is an important reform. Uh, and for all of the, you know, the talk from the Liberal Party and the National Party about needing more time to, to debate it, they've had years They've had years. We had 60 hours plus debate on the CPRS. That was on the last occasion. Remember, it had been in the Parliament a number of times before. Uh, so they've had a lot of time. And the reality is no amount of debate is going to change Tony Abbott's mind. He wants to destroy this reform. I don't think he'll be able to deliver once once uh, it has been put in place. Uh, uh, tearing it down, but uh, there's no he, doubt he'll keep talking though, about it. He says his pledge, he said this morning his pledge to repeal it's written in blood. That shows well, some bit, of his determination, doesn't it? Well, it's a bit dramatic, isn't it, really? Written in blood sounds like something out of a boy's own manual, but uh, uh, look, uh, ultimately this is about business certainty. It's about transforming the economy. Uh, I think Mr Abbott's going to have a, a great deal of trouble if he were to become uh, the leader of the country uh, repealing this. All the talk we've been having this morning has been about the parliamentary debate and while that's been tricky for the government to manage in minority government, you have a bigger task, don't you? You have not yet convinced the Australian public that carbon pricing will do all the things you say it will do. Mm. Is that task simply too great? Well, let's remember where the debate's been. Uh, because I think it's important not to get frozen in time when you look at the political debates. There was a time in this country, not that long ago, what is it, four years ago, where there was bipartisan support and 
community, uh, strong community consensus on the need for action on climate change. It is a big reform. It is a reform of our economy. It's saying we are no longer going to run our economy on the basis you can pollute as much as you like without charge and without limit. Uh, that's a big change. Uh, and it's true that uh, I think what we've seen is a, a scare campaign that has been effective. Uh, but I do think it's important for politicians and this parliament to think beyond the short term and to think about what is, where do we want to be as a nation in 10 years time? What do we want to say to our children? Do we want to uh, bequeath to them a cleaner energy economy, an economy that's less polluting? Do we want to do our bit on climate change? I think the answer to those questions is yes. But, but is it a more difficult argument to make to the public, more difficult to convince the public when you don't have bipartisan support. Absolutely. And we'll just hear Harry Jenkins read the votes. 72, no 74. The question is therefore negative. Yeah. Lord, I now put the question that amendments one and two to the Clean Energy Fuel Tax Legislation Amendment Bill 2011, moved by the member for O'Connor, be agreed to. All those of that opinion say aye. Contrary, no. I think the no's have it. Div division required. Bring the bells for one minute. I appoint the same tellers for this division as for the previous division. Members should uh, report to the tellers if they are changing their vote, or if they did not vote in the last. Division. To push the introduction of the carbon tax out till after the next election has, has been lost. I did say earlier that the amendments have been dealt with, but we're still going through the final votes on those this morning. Uh, Penny Wong, the Finance Minister and the Minister who will have carried the bills in the Senate is still with us in Parliament House. Penny Wong, we were talking before about uh, how difficult it will be to convince the public and, and I was asking if that if you don't have bipartisan support and, and it doesn't look like you will have it when the carbon price comes in in July next year, how long is it going to take the public to see the effects of that carbon price and to uh, to know, as you believe they will, Members that it won't be as bad as Tony Abbott has portrayed it. Well, I think to get out of the, the scare campaign, to get away from all the, the untruths which have been told, you know, things like the death of the coal industry and, and those sorts of things which are, are patently untrue, uh, we're going to have to experience it. And I think what people will see is that uh, the, the day after the price on carbon comes in, the you know, chickens will still get up and the sun will still rise and uh, the sky's not going to fall in. But more importantly, uh, what we will see, particularly over time, is a change in behaviour uh, in our businesses. We'll see more investment into clean energy, more investment into clean energy jobs and uh, better ways and cleaner ways of doing business. Uh, it's a long and gradual uh, transformation we will see in our economy, but as we were reminded uh, in recent days, we keep forgetting that if we delay well, how much the cost will be. And This is the sort of bizarre thing about Tony Abbott's position. He wants to impose a higher cost. The question and, now uh, is that we're just listening to as amended, Harry agreed. Jenkins. All those of that opinion say aye. aye. Contrary, no. Aye. I think the ayes have it. Division required. And this is the, the vote on the bills for one as amended. Minute. One minute. The bills as amended are now being voted on, so this is does appear to be the final vote on the package of the carbon price bills, the clean energy future bills. There'll be a separate vote on the steel transformation bill, which, uh, which had a slightly wider margin when the second reading vote happened yesterday because Bob Catter supported it. Uh, Penny Wong, has, has though the government's uh, aim to get public support been damaged by the fact that the Prime Minister said before the election there wouldn't be a carbon price under the government she led and that has undermined the trust that you need with the people. 
Look, I think I think the the challenge for the government has been to put forward what is a, a tough reform, a reform that does does change how the economy works, uh, in the face of uh, such a, a, a vitriolic scare campaign, uh, and that has been difficult. Uh, and we've also seen we've seen a continued uh, failure to be responsible by, from from the other side. And I think in in that uh, somewhat febrile environment, it's been what difficult for the government to uh, you know explain clearly to people uh, what is occurring. It's always easy to, to frighten people. It's always easier uh, to tell people why something shouldn't happen. It's always easier to oppose. And unfortunately, when you have Tony Abbott as opposition leader, that's what you get. Uh, but we need to press ahead with this reform. And I think Australians will see next year when the carbon price comes in, when they start to receive higher pensions, start to receive the benefits through the family tax system, uh, start to see the benefits through the increasing of the tax-free th threshold, they'll start to see the benefits of this reform. Tony Abbott and, and his opposition spokesperson on climate change, Greg Hunt, seem convinced that they would be able to repeal this bill in government. Have you made it repeal proof? Uh, look, uh, I think that the bigger issue is if, if they, they were uh, to uh, gain government is that they would be saying to the Australian people, we want you to have lower pensions, we want you to have less higher taxes because we have to put up the tax free th put the tax free threshold back down again uh, and we want you to have less family tax benefit. They're also, they would also be saying to business, uh, we want to remove the very certainty that you've been calling for. It would be an extraordinary act of economic irresponsibility from a man who used to support this. I mean, let's remember on this day today, let's remember Tony Abbott and Greg Hunt are both on the record as supporting both an emissions trading scheme and certainly Tony Abbott as supporting a carbon tax. So the man who says he's a conviction policist, politician, you know, who's written in blood apparently his desire to repeal it, wants campaign for it uh, under a different leader in a different time. It says something about his bona fides. Penny Wong, with that, I know you have to go. Thank you very much for your time. Good to be with you. And that was the Finance Minister, Penny Wong, who was the Climate Change Minister the last time a carbon price was tried to get through the Parliament. And the Parliament's having its final vote on the carbon price bills, the Clean Energy Future Bills, a package of 18 pieces of government legislation. Uh, the, uh, the numbers are being counted. The MPs are seated in the chamber, as they have been for most of the morning so far, with, I think, uh, we're up to now, our third division. Uh, there were a couple of amendments, final amendments, to be dealt with. The opposition leader's amendment that the bills not be proclaimed, that effectively the carbon price not come into effect until after the next election was defeated. Tony Crook, the Western Australian national who opposes the carbon price bills, did move some amendments yesterday dealing with the diesel fuel tax changes under the carbon bill because he said there were many in his electorate that would be affected by those changes. Uh, those amendments were defeated again, uh, were defeated as well. What the parliament is voting on now is that the bills as amended uh, be, be supported. And here's the speaker, Harry Jenkins. Oh, the votes are... So, Lindell, uh, this is the bills as amended. Will there be a final uh, third reading vote after this, or as far as you know, this, this is it? I, th I think this is it. They still do have the, uh, the separate bill, the Steel Transformation yep. Plan, which, uh, which is uh, not been a part of the Clean Energy Future Bills because it was what co was called a government-only measure. It wasn't agreed to by the government's multi-party committee on climate change. Uh, the Greens have now said that they will support those bills through the Senate although they do want them amended, but if their amendments fail, they'll still support them anyway. So we're expecting at least one more vote after this one. Order. The result of the division is I 74, no 72. The question is therefore resolved in the affirmative. These bills, as amended, have been agreed to. Yeah. Order. 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 The question now is, order. <laughs> order. 
The question now is that the Steel Transformation Plan Bill 2011 be agreed to. All those of that opinion say aye. aye. The contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. Division required. Division required. Ring the bells for one minute. I appoint the same tellers. Members who are. So, Lindell, uh, their we're witnessing there a moment in history of the official the passage through Parliament of the bills facilitating the introduction powers. of a carbon tax. The Senate vote next. Yes, the, uh, the Clean Energy Future Bills, the package of 18 bills, has now passed the House of Representatives. The Parliament's now voting on that final piece of legislation, the t Steel Transformation plan. I've been joined in the studio now by the Shadow Parliamentary Secretary for the Environment, Simon Birmingham, a Senator. Uh, Simon Birmingham, welcome to News24. Good morning, Lyndall. These bills will hit the Senate next. What are you expecting to happen? when they do? Well, we will have a vigorous debate in the Senate. Uh, we will try to uh, once again highlight uh, the many, many flaws in this package and, of course, the many, many concerns about this package for Australia's future, the concerns about what it will do to the competitiveness of Australian industry, the concerns about what it means for a future job market in Australia and, of course, the concerns about the cost of living impacts it will have on all Australian families. The Senate debate, though, will be different from last time because the government has the numbers. The Greens will support it. In the end, these bills will go through the parliament and, all things being equal, this will come into... this will be law and come into being on the 1st of July next year. Once people see it in action, do you think that the sorts of warnings you have been making, the opposition's been making, will hold up against scrutiny? Well, they're not just warnings that the opposition has been making. They are, in fact, facts that are backed up uh, by the government's own Treasury modelling, modelling that uh, we think is quite conservative in its estimates. But Australians will see, come the 1st of July next year, 10% extra on their electricity bills. Right around the country, whether you're a household or a family, whether you're a small business or a medium or a big business, everyone will face that 10% increase in electricity bills, significant rises to gas, to water, to rent, to housing construction charges. These things will flow right through the economy. They will be big imposts and they will keep going up year after year. So the impacts will be real, they will be felt and they will be there for all Australians to see. Would take the division? No, 71. The question is therefore resolved in the affirmative. This bill has been agreed to. Order pursuant to the resolution agreed to by the House on the 13th of September 2011, the House will now proceed to the third readings of the Clean Energy Bill 2011 and 17 related bills, not including the Steel Transformation Plan Bill 2011 together. The question now is that these bills be now read a third time. All those of that opinion say aye. aye. Contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. Division required? Division required. Ring the bells for one minute. I appoint the same tellers as for the previous division. Members should remain in their places unless they are changing their vote or they did not vote in the previous division. And now these are the final third reading. They, there is one final vote to go on both of these pieces of legislation, but on the numbers we've already seen this morning, they will get through. Uh, Simon Birmingham, the Shadow Parliamentary Secretary for the Environment, is still with me in the Parliament House studio. Simon, the Prime Minister promised that this will be her year of decision and delivery. Clearly, she has been able to deliver this and, and she's likely to be also able to deliver the mining tax. Does this... Uh, put some trust back in the Prime Minister that she can do these things? Well, I think what she is delivering on are, of course, things uh, that undermine trust in the Prime Minister, uh, in particular this carbon tax. What we're witnessing at present is an act of betrayal by not just the Prime Minister, but by all 72 Labor members of the House of Representatives. Uh, these members were all backed from the Prime Minister down. 
into the election on the well, basis of there not being a carbon tax. They've now they uh, passed it through the House of Representatives. This is a massive act of betrayal on their behalf to their electorates, to the people who voted for them, to people who went to the ballot box believing that there would not be a carbon tax. And we just went through a farcical parliamentary inquiry into these bills and we had just six days to get submissions uh, from Australians on 1,100 pages of legislation. But more than 4,500 people took the time to make their views known and overwhelmingly they feel betrayed by the Prime Minister. They won't be happy to see delivery of this tax or of this legislation. They will feel let down in the extreme. We spoke about before the Senate, the Senate will next debate these bills. Would you be expecting that every opposition senator will want to have their say on these bills? Uh, there are passionate views in the well, coalition just as there are throughout the Australian community. And absolutely, I imagine that coalition senators will all want to have their say. Uh, I imagine that uh, we will want to have an... We'll just take the clerk now. Third reading, a bill for an act to encourage the use of clean energy and for other purposes. Third reading, a bill for an act to deal with consequential matters arising from the enactment of the Clean Energy Act 2011 and for other purposes. Third reading, a bill for an act to amend the Income Tax Rates Act 1986 and for related purposes. Third reading, a bill for an act to amend the law relating to social security, family assistance, veterans entitlements, military rehabilitation and compensation, farm household support and aged care and for related purposes. Third reading, a bill for an act to amend the law relating to taxation and for related purposes. Third reading, a bill for an act to amend fuel tax legislation and for related purposes. Third reading, a bill for an act to amend the Customs Tariff Act 1995 and for related purposes. Third reading, a bill for an act to amend excise tariff legislation and for related purposes. Third reading, a bill for an act to amend the Ozone Protection and Synthetic Greenhouse Gas Import Levy Act 1995 and for related purposes. 